All right, so here's a couple more examples of alternating series. So again, I see this negative one. Um, it's pretty, hopefully pretty easy to convince yourself that if you plug in n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, um, you will be getting an alternating series. Um, notice if you plug in n equals one, I guess that's gonna give you ln of one, which is zero. But definitely um, after that, the LNs will always be positive and you certainly will be, get an, be getting an alternating series. So again, here are our B sub n's. So again, we have to show two things. We have to show that the limit as n goes to infinity is zero, and we have to show that it's decreasing. So again, these two criteria are only enough when you have an alternating series, so you have to be careful of that. In the last example, I did decreasing first, but I usually look at the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, because if that's not zero, well then I'm done and it diverges. And to me, usually doing the limit is easier than showing you know, the decreasing using the first derivative test. Well right now as n goes to infinity, ln of infinity is infinity. You also have infinity on the bottom. So this is an indeterminate form. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule says just take the derivative of the top, that's one over n. The derivative of the bottom, that's just one. Well, this is equivalent to just plain old one over n, and as n goes to infinity, this certainly is gonna equal zero. So criteria one is down. The next thing we're gonna have to show is that this is also a decreasing sequence. So maybe I'll rewrite it, f of x equals ln of x over x. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna be decreasing. If you think about the graphs, ln of x doesn't get big very fast. x, you know, gets bigger much faster than ln of x. So my intuition tells me the denominator is getting bigger much quicker than the numerator. So this limit should be zero. But again, to justify it, we'll just use the first derivative test. So it says you leave the bottom alone. You take the derivative of the top, which is one over x, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom part, squared. So the numerator, I'm gonna get one minus ln of x, and then I'm gonna get x squared on the bottom. So I'm gonna get a critical number when the denominator equals zero. But again, since my limit or excuse me, since my series starts at one, I really only care what happens to the right of one. Um, let's see, so if I set the numerator equal to zero, I'll have one minus ln of x equals zero. If I add ln of x to both sides, I'll get one. And recall, you can either solve this two ways by exponentiating both sides or turning it into um, its exponential form. But recall ln of e is what equals one. So here's the number e. And if I put in something larger than e into my derivative, well, e squared is always gonna be positive in the denominator. If I put in something larger than e, like a billion, ln of a billion is certainly something bigger than one. So I'm gonna get something negative on top, something positive on the bottom which means that my function is decreasing, and e is 2.71, so it's gonna be decreasing for values of n greater than or equal to three. And this was the idea I said before, it doesn't have to actually be decreasing for all terms, it just has to be eventually decreasing. Well, it certainly is eventually decreasing, it's decreasing from three on. I've shown it's decreasing, I've shown that the limit equals zero, and that now implies that this series does in fact converge. Okay, let's do one more example here. So here we have the example cosine of n times pi divided by n to the three-fourths and again, this is one of those series that certainly doesn't look like an alternating series at the very beginning. Um, but notice if I start writing out terms, if I plug in one, I'll get cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative one. 
Then I'll plug in n equals 2. That'll give me cosine of 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is plus 1. I should plug in a 1 here. And then I would have 2 to the 3 fourths. When I plug in n equals 3, I'm going to get a negative 1 on top. If I plug in n equals 4, I'll get cosine of 2 pi, which is going to give me a positive term. So really, this series is a fancy way of writing the series n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over 1 over n to the 3 fourths. Okay, so kind of a tricky way that they wrote it. It doesn't, again, look exactly like these other ones where you have this this negative one to the power kind of staring you in the face. So when you get stuck, write out some terms, see what happens. It may make the problem, in fact, much easier, like in this case. And this one, again, is pretty simple now. If I make this my b sub n's, well, the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n to the three-fourths is certainly going to be zero. And again, it's pretty obvious that this is decreasing. Um, if we use, if we just try to show it straight from the definition, certainly it's true that 1 over n plus 1 to the 3 fourths is going to be less than or equal to 1 over n to the 3 fourths for n greater than or equal to 1 because I'm going to have something bigger in the denominator um, than I do on the other side, and that's going to make the entire thing smaller. So it's clearly de decreasing as well. So I've now shown my two criteria. I've shown that the limit goes to zero. Again, it's pretty obvious that it's decreasing. Um, if you had to, you could even write out a few terms on an exam, or you know, if you really wanted to, you could do the first derivative test like we did in the last example. So again, this is an example of a converging alternating series.